As I drive through the serene countryside, heading to Dr. Singer's workshop. <laughs> I can't help but feel a sense of anticipation. Today I am about to witness a revolutionary approach to food preservation, one that brings local ingenuity with the modern technology. In the art of innovation, where local materials meet cutting-edge technology, we discover a groundbreaking solution to one of the most pressing issues in agriculture food preservation. Here we meet Dr. Singer, a visionary who has combined science and local craftsmanship to create a revolutionary drying machine designed specifically for preserving fruit like mangoes, ginger, pawpaw, pao, skuma wiki, and other perishable crops. Alongside him, an indicated team works tirelessly, cutting ripe mangoes and slicing pawpaws ready to be placed into the drying chambers. With every piece carefully prepared, the process begins. These machines, made from locally sourced materials, harness the power of hair circulation a gentle heat to remove moisture from the fruit, extending its shelf life, unlocking essential nutrients. Once dried, the fruit are packed and stoned, now ready to be enjoyed long after the harvest season has passed. This innovation offers a solution not only for reducing food waste but also for empowering local communities by providing a means of preserving their produce for future use and trade. Thanks to Dr. Singer's innovation, what was a once a seasonal abundance can now be enjoyed throughout the year ensuring that the fruit of today are preserved for tomorrow. From a very humble beginnings to a brighter future, this is food preservation redefined. Yes, this is another day that Lord has made that we meet with an engineer here whereby we are doing this interview for you to know how to preserve your mangoes, tomatoes and all veggies. I am with the singer, the professor. Welcome. Muzungu, how are you? Habari yako? Nzuri sana. So you know some Swahili? Uh, like? You know? Bili <laughs> ka. You know to count to one, two, three, up to? Huh? Oh, no, I'm working on that. You're working on that. Eh? Ah, feel much welcome. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. And now today we are talking about uh, uh, preservation of uh, vegetables, mangoes, and what have you. You've come here and you've done some uh, innovation. Uh, tell us about it. Uh, uh, first of all, introduce yourself. My name is Professor Singer. I'm African American man coming from the United States of America, coming back to Africa, my homeland. <laughs> My ancestral homeland, yeah, most of my relatives are from here. Okay. And having, I live a number of years, years ago in Ghana, and I left to return to get an engineering degree. And then I returned again uh, in 2020, but this time to East Africa. Yeah, I learned, I learned a lot about Kenya. I thought Kenya would be a wonderful place to go to. So let me go and see if I can do some of the things that I would like to do. And I would like to share the knowledge and experience and resources that I have to be able to help Kenya and other African people, their local communities and the nation itself. Interesting. I, Interesting. I can share. I have things to give. Yeah. Tell us about this innovation, about uh, the preservation uh, uh, technology. Uh, basically, the, I've developed a solar dryer that's able to dry foodstuffs, spices, herbs, fruits, vegetables here to preserve them because if you can preserve them through drying, you save on weight, you save on cost, you retain the nutritional value of the food, uh, the storage, you don't need electricity, it's much lighter to ship and people can keep their foods the whole year and for example we we're talking about mangoes. Yeah, who wants to lose 40% of your crop because it's spoiled before you could get it to market or because people didn't buy soon enough so it goes what if you could keep it for 18 months 
14 months for yourself and your family or sell it you know when the time when the market prices go up sell it at the high price but in the meantime you can store it there in your own sheds and when the time comes to sell you can sell and it won't spoil so drying drying through solar energy is a very old it's an ancient process but given today's technologies today's understanding of thermal processes given today's materials and manufacturing capabilities we can make them now better than before I, i'm sure some of your family you, we used to dry some of the food in the sun just put it out yes yeah. and you don't worry about the dogs walking on it or <laughs> the flies or ants interesting maybe someone may ask how do we go about it maybe is it expensive to to have these drying machines and what are um relatively no because the later maybe they can show see a shot of it um the machine is basically made from local materials or materials that are available here and assembled here yeah you know the welders right here in the community helped me put it together yeah and that's it yeah and that's it so so the rel- if you were to buy imported solar drying machines very expensive yeah we're talking like 800,000 shillings these are in the hundreds of shillings. maybe to the farmers around here in Tharaka they are they have a lot of food stuff maybe to preserve that they are very perishable highly perishable maybe is this practical to for them and how can you explain it how do you do it maybe you can take us through the process yeah well the process would be harvesting first and different types of foods would require drying at different stages for example we we're talking about mangoes the most delicious mangoes are harvested when they're very ripe and sweet not too soft because they dry in about 14 hours or less depending on the sun which means once they're dried you put them in a container seal it and you can keep them for well over a year only yeah yes not preservation and what without any chemicals without any other processing without anything just dry them take them while they're dry put them in a in a container keep them out of the light keep them away from air which has you know the air has moisture in it you don't want any moisture to go back into the fruit and you can preserve in order to spoil you need bacteria you need the organic material like the food itself and you need heat yeah with how uh, these are machines how, how are they decide to maybe to be able to to dry right. yeah when they dry water is one of the things you need you need the water you need the heat you need the organic material and bacteria with those it will spoil you take away one or more of those things the process stops you take out you remove most of the water it won't spoil yeah it sits there you can have germs and bacteria all over it but it doesn't cause the the spoilage process but if you take you I'm sure if you take a mango and cut it and lick it like that <laughs> and put it out yeah put it out there in two days it's black yeah yeah so maybe, maybe how are you helping the farmers here because I you can see you're doing this practically right now yes yeah um, it will be helping the farmers if the farmers begin implementing the drying of food because it will be able to extend greatly the shelf life we talked earlier about the increased cost of what you can get you know if you sell it especially in international marketplaces you know i mentioned that maybe 130 150 shillings worth of mangoes when dried and shipped to the united states 42000 shillings from 150 shillings and that's at the market that's not even at a wholesale rate if you or i go out to the market and buy 150 shillings worth of mangoes and dry it if we were able to package it and ship it to countries like the United States the end user the customer will pay the equivalent of 42,000 shillings for that 1 kg of dried mango that's a 1 kg 1 kg yeah yeah and the farmer is happy because if he was able or she was able to dry all of their fruit before they spoiled now there's no losses yeah before the fruit started spoiling and falling like that we dr- we harvested and dried all of it maybe remembering the process because we are going to show our viewers the process because we've taken some pictures on how yes. we are going to put them you can explain to us first of all you get the fruit you wash you 
cut in small pieces and then yes well you can get a little bit fancier than that for example you can boil you can boil it or bleach it or something like that, blanch it like that and that keeps the color very well but you would don't need to worry about keeping the color so well if it's protected by a thing if it's protected by a opaque cover because then the ultraviolet light doesn't take away the color yeah so this process keeps it very simple yeah the whole process of drying harvest the fruit clean it cut it slice it put it in the racks dry it let it stay there for two days then pull it out done need to stay there for around two days sun, two sunny days yeah about 12 to 15 hours yeah then later maybe, you maybe it. even down yeah maybe down to even 10 or 11 hours you know on a very hot day from that now you package and then uh, yes yes oh that's good amazing yes. maybe in this project to uh supported you are uh, the farmers willing to maybe to to embrace this kind of a technology well we're we're act, you know we're working with other NGOs here to see if we can get support for wide scale distribution of the dryers and training, you know, in the processes, in the manufacture, in the construction, in the marketing of that. Yeah, as a CBO, as a single organization, we don't have the capabilities to undertake all of those aspects to get it out into the Kenyan world. Yeah, but you are starting. Yeah, yeah. Getting to somewhere. Maybe. Yes, yes. How are the farmers? Have you trying to teach? Because I can see you have some employees. They are doing something. Have you trained maybe to do kind of a seminars to farmers around this place to uh, embrace the technology? Um, we've introduced them, but we haven't introduced formal training yet. That we we would want to professionalize that. Yeah, not just kind of random hit this a little bit here and there. Maybe that. No, no, no. We a formal curriculum. Yeah. Where they come, they meet, they see, they see the steps A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, through Z. Now they know. Now they can begin to do it themselves. Amazing. That's good. Yeah. What else maybe are you doing around here, uh, away from this? Um, in terms of the solar? Yeah. Well, again, our technology and innovations. Yeah, yeah. Our, our organization is the Raka Invention Circle. Yeah, and the, one of the one of the projects that we have in the Rock Invention Circle is the Rock Invention Academy, which is basically dedicated to teaching people how to professionally go about and in a very systematic way innovating. Just like we innovate this, you try this, you what you know, you try again, you build, you test it, and you know, innovating, taking from the initial idea of just a dream and taking it all the way up to marketing, distribution, manufacturing, sale, yeah. Including the process of how do you market, how do you sell something like this? Can you take, if it's absolutely new, can you invent? Well, in nutshell, as we conclude, maybe your message to farmers around in Taraka and also all over Kenya, all over the world, those who are watching you, what can you encourage them to do in order to maybe to preserve their foodstuffs? I'd say don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. There are people like me, I'm not the only one, there are people like me who are working hard every day to be able to raise the standard of living, to increase the value, to increase the viability of agriculture here in Kenya. Well, ag actually agriculture, in, when you start innovating and inventing, that can be anything. Fashion, machinery, equipment, digital data, phones, communicate, yeah, everything. But as far as the farmers are concerned, yeah, there are people working on that. And hopefully, we'll be able to get these out into the market for people to begin using and benefiting them also. Yeah. These are the kind of machines that are being used to dry fruit and other uh, food stuff here by the Mzungu, the Professor Singer, who has come with a lot of innovation to help farmers here in Daraka. Mostly uh, farmers who are uh, doing uh, mango farming and other uh, perishable fruit here can encourage we can encourage them to embrace this kind of a technology as you've seen it will be of much help to them thank you very much for watching this channel and we are requesting you to just subscribe so that we can encourage us to do this kind of stories 
more and more uh, by your support. Thank you very much. My name is Nelson Boso and this is Boso TV channel.